How crazy is it? Gentlemen, Myron and Kyle, did you guys team up to ask the same question in the same time period? Like I'm scrolling through my comments and I saw two comments basically asking pretty much the same thing. Myron asked, do you have a video on a trade to a lease? And Kyle asked, I'm wondering how negative equity is wrapped into a lease. And I'm gonna use this comment as the guide for this video itself. I currently owe 13K on a Honda that is only worth eight to 10K. So if I only get 8K, are they willing, are they really willing to roll the negative equity into the new lease even though I could walk away from the lease at the end of the three or four years. Thank you so much, Kyle and Myron. I'm gonna answer this question in completion and I wanna make it so that anybody that's watching this could understand, regardless of negative equity, maybe it's the opposite. You have positive equity, how that works on a lease. What is happening, guys? Ari here from Boston Automotive Consulting and as always, this video is brought to you by SaveOnMyAuto.com. SaveOnMyAuto.com is a resource you can use so that you can leverage the best possible deal. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because this whole channel is gonna teach you everything you're gonna need to know so that you can negotiate your best possible deal. Now, taking into account what Kyle has told me, he's got a Honda with a loan of about 13,000. The Honda's only worth about 8,000. So we have a couple variables here. One of them is the ACV, which is the actual cash value of the vehicle that the dealership is gonna use. The ACV on the car is about 8,000 and the payoff on the car is about 13,000. So we're dealing now with an equity amount of $5,000. That is what's going to be called a negative equity amount. Say for instance though, it was a positive equity amount as in the payoff on the car was 8,000 and the value of the car was 13. Say for instance, Kyle was making a ton of extra payments on a car that was worth $13,000. You'd now have a positive equity amount of 5,000. This is for you folks that have positive equity. So we've got an equity amount and we've got an amount due at start. Usually what a lease requires is, is about $1,500-ish in fees that's usually either paid upfront or incorporated into the lease. If you've got a positive equity amount, if you've got $5,000 in positive equity, you have a couple options here. Do you want a check back for the positive equity or would you like to subtract the amount due at start from this amount and give you a check back? So in essence, 1,500 subtracted from the 3,000. Do you want a check back for 3,500? Or would you like to use the 3,500 in additional down payment against your payments? What I wanna to suggest to you is, is maybe pay the fees with the $5,000 and get a check back for $3,500. This is always an option, and it's always an option that I recommend to clients. If you got five grand in positive equity, use part of it for the fees and get a check back for the rest. Don't just throw it all against your lease payments. Now, in Kyle's situation where he's got a negative equity situation, not only does he have $1,500 in fees that's going into the lease, he's also got $5,000 in negative equity that's also going into this lease scenario. So now he's got $6,500 going in. Now, Kyle has some questions that he's gonna be asked. Do you wanna pay the negative equity balance or do you wanna roll in the negative equity? Would you like to pay the fees, do it start and roll in the balance or do you wanna roll in everything? The, this is going to be highly dependent on how expensive of a vehicle Kyle's looking at because of a couple different things. Now, while you do have the option of rolling in everything, the bank may not allow it depending on your credit score and that's the only thing that gets tricky when we're talking about negative equity. Now, what happens is on a lease, depending on what your credit score is, the bank will allow you three different situations where they'll allow you to either take out a loan for more than the car, take out a loan for exactly the amount for the car, or in some cases, if your credit is bad, 80% of what the car is. This is going to be especially important if we're talking about are we gonna be rolling in negative equity, are we gonna be rolling in nothing, or do we have to put a major down payment so that we can get approval on the lease itself? In Kyle's situation, it's likely that he's going to put a little chunk 
down so that he can get an approval on the lease. So say for instance, if he's leasing out a Honda Accord, say at $24,000 and the bank says, with your credit, if it's excellent, we can give you 100% we can give you 120% LTV, which is the loan to value, and that's the maximum. So 20% of $24,000 means Kyle would have about $4,800 in extra that can be plugged in into this lease. So if you've got $4,800 and you've got $5,000 in negative equity, that means $200 would have to be paid in addition to the approximate $1,500 in fees if you've got an excellent credit. If you don't have excellent credit and your credit is mediocre and say the bank is giving you 100% maximum loan to value, then that means nothing can be added into the lease. Only the car can be leased and you have to pay $5,000 in the negative equity to the dealership so that they can zero out your balance with the bank and then pay the fees out of pocket. So now you've gotta come up with $6,500. In the case that your credit is bad and you're getting approved for only 80% and you've got a lot of negative equity, then that $24,000 would require you to actually put down about $4,800 plus zero out your balance on the Honda plus put the fees up front. In the case that you're trying to lease out a Honda Accord, it gets very, very tricky trying to roll in negative equity. So hopefully if your credit is great and you've got 120% maximum loan to value, it definitely gives you a lot of wiggle room. If your credit is bad, then you gotta work on putting a heavy down payment up front so your payment doesn't skyrocket and obviously so they can get approval on that lease. I will say it's obviously a lot easier rolling in negative equity into a higher priced vehicle because you've got more maximum loan to value to work with. So rolling in negative equity on a $24,000 car, you start to really, really get down to the nitty gritty on how much money can be rolled in into a new lease. Another possibility that I do want to mention is, is not necessarily conducting the whole transaction at the dealership. However, what you can do is if you've got some negative equity, but you're not trying to sell the car to the dealership and you're trying to sell it to say CarMax, what you can do is, is ask the dealership for a check and that check be rolled in into the lease. So say Kyle, you went to CarMax and CarMax offered to pay you $10,000 for that Honda, you can ask the dealership for a check for $3,000, hand that check over to CarMax and never actually take any money out of your pocket. I hope that this video clarified for you guys how a trade-in works when you're trying to lease out a new car. It really all depends on if you've got a positive equity balance or a negative equity balance, what you wanna do with the positive equity, how you wanna handle the negative equity, and what your credit score is so that it depends whether or not the bank will take in all the negative equity or require that you put a large chunk of money down and pay off your balance or keep the transaction separate altogether. As always, this video was brought to you by SaveOnMyAuto.com. SaveOnMyAuto.com is a resource you can use so that you can leverage the best possible deal. And if you found this information useful, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to check out SaveOnMyAuto.com as well as the resources down in the description below. Thank you so, so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.